A popular idea in science fiction, the idea of colonizing Mars, has been captured by state space agencies and private corporations for several years. Why are we so eager to go to Mars? Will people be able to survive in such conditions? And what will be the first city on the red planet? Watch in this video. Almost every US president promised from the stands to deliver Americans to the moon and fly to Mars. Fifty years later, since the day when Neil Armstrong's foot touched the surface of our satellite, people have not got beyond the Earth's orbit. It's not just about technology, but about everything in order. Why do we need to go to Mars at all? The reason for the interest in the colonization of Mars is curiosity. That is, the opportunity to conduct deeper studies of the planet than is available to reverse. The economic interest in its resources and the possibility that the settlement of other planets can reduce the probability of human extinction. At the same time, there are many participants in the Mars race today, so both state space agencies, for example, European, Indian, Chinese, the Zobrus Cosmos, the United Arab Emirates, and private companies such as SpaceX, Lockheed Martin and Boeing have declared their ambitions in the colonization of Mars. An interesting fact is that at the World Government Summit, in February 2017, the United Arab Emirates announced a plan to create a settlement on Mars by 2117, under the leadership of the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center. Given the specificity of the year and the deadline itself, which is quite real, Emirates already has a well-developed program for conquering Mars. And yet, I Mars? The Earth is similar to Venus in composition, has gravity on the surface, but once on Venus, you'll simply evaporate, a matter of fractions of a second. The Earth also has similarities with Mars. So the Martian day or soul is very close in duration to the Earth and is equal to 24 hours and 39 minutes. The inclination of the axis of Mars is close to that of Earth, which means that there are seasons very similar to those of Earth, although they last almost two times longer. There is also water ice on Mars, but then there are some differences. The surface area of Mars is less than 30% of the Earth's area. The gravity is only 38% of Earth's. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is much lower than the Armstrong limit at which people can serve if without spacesuits. At the same time, the atmosphere is toxic, since it consists of 95% carbon dioxide, and it also does not filter ultraviolet sunlight, which causes instability of the molecular bond between atoms. Also, due to the thinness of the atmosphere, and the temperature difference between day and night is about 70 degrees Celsius. In the plan, the planet is strongly cooled during dust storms that envelop the entire Mars for weeks and do not let the sun's rays on its surface. There is little water on Mars. The old Terran vehicle spirit and opportunity found it less than in the most deserts of the Earth. The Martian soil is toxic due to relatively high concentrations of chlorine and related compounds that are dangerous for all known life forms. And there is also deadly radiation, micrometeorite impacts and viviquitous dust, as well as the need to spend six months in isolation during a trip to Mars, which can become a one-way flight and the less. Even the author of the Martian and Ware admitted that it is easier to build a city on the ocean floor than to survive on Mars. But all this does not stop enthusiasts, because they believe that by overcoming all obstacles and coping with difficulties, humanity can get huge opportunities, consisting not only in terms of escape, in case of a global cataclysm, but also in access to unlimited resources of other planes. So why hasn't Mars been colonized yet? The answer is simple. The problem is money. If the Apollo program was dictated by the need to overtake the Soviet Union in landing on the moon, and for this the US Congress allocated a lot of money to NASA, then today there is simply no such political will of the powerful, and people believe that it would be better for government scientists to deal with the problems of the Earth in order to prevent a global catastrophe. They were looking for workarounds. The same money problems are not allied to private companies, including SpaceX. Let's say the funding problem is solved. How can we build cities on Mars? 
One of the ideas for the development of the Red Planet is terraforming, that is, the transformation of Mars into a habitat more similar to Earth. The hypothetical process of terraforming should lead to the fact that an atmosphere capable of retaining heat will appear on Mars. An analogue of the ozone layer is formed, a bisphere and a full-fledged magnetic field. Theoretically there are many ways to implement it, for example, Elon Musk proposed bombing the planet with nuclear bombs, and there is also the idea of creating satellites in the orbit of Mars, with large reflectors that would focus sunlight, directing it to the planet. Also, there was an idea to drop a comet, ice asteroids from the asteroid belt, and one of the moons of Jupiter on the planet. By heating the planet and concentrating carbon dioxide under its new atmosphere, bacteria that feed on Katu and emit oxygen could be placed on the surface. But all this, moreover, is not feasible today, since, for example, there simply won't be enough nuclear weapons on Earth to launch the real process of terraforming. On Mars, it will also take an indefinite long time, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of years. Then there is another option, to settle on Mars as it is, using the available resources of the planet. This means, firstly, construction of a dam, who most likely be made by 3 printing from materials extracted on the planet. Secondly, the production of oxygen as possible, as the last Martian rover Perseverance proved, and thirdly, the cultivation of food work on this task has been going on for a long time. So, Vikimis, as at the Technical University of Florida, are conducting experiments to turn simulated Martian soil into fertile soil, while scientists suggest extracting protein from insects or growing synthetic meat. The non-profit Society Mars Society, which has its own closed laboratory in the Utah desert, also conducts its experiments on growing potatoes on Mars, it is reported that more or less edible greens have already been grown there. Well, it's a little far from gastronomic delight. In any case, it is best to entrust the creation of greenhouses and the improvement of the soil, including the removal of the upper toxic layer, to robots, so that by the time people arrive on the plane, there will already be some kind of food supply. Also, the robots will have to organize in advance the search and extraction of water, the production of oxygen and carry out a lot of preparatory work. But, all the same, first colonists will need to bring a lot of land with them. So, Elon Musk considered that it would be necessary to organize 10 cargo flights for one flight with people. It will be possible to get to Mars on a NASA spacecraft, including a giant carrier rocket cells with a mass of two and a half thousand tons, and an Oeing capsule. A safe landing on Mars is also a difficult task. NASA used an innovative ski crane to lower its wanton Courier City rover to the surface in 2012. The Orion capsule weighs almost 10 tons without a service module or landing rocket. Currently, the agency is developing giant inflatable heat shields designed to slow down spacecraft as they approach Mars, which makes it possible for larger ships to land. Also, the transport system for flights to Mars is being created by SpaceX. The main structural components of the interplanetary system will be a returnable launch via for launching from Earth, an interplanetary spacecraft for transporting cargo and people, as well as its tanker modification for refueling a spacecraft in space after launching from Earth or from the surface of other large celestial bodies of the solar system. The last announced dates for the unmanned and manned SpaceX mission to Mars were 2024 and 2026. An interesting project of the City of the Future on Mars appeared in the spring of this year. It was presented by the Catalan Institute of Space Research. The city is called Nua and is expected to be built between 2050 and 2100. The new program became one of the finalists of the competition organized by the Mars Society, whose goal was to find the most feasible urban construction project on the planet. Moreover, the city should not just be autonomous that is supporting itself but also ensure its own growth. New is designed for 200-250,000 people and will be almost completely built from tunnels built into the rock and will provide protection from radiation and separate buildings will be built in the tunnel connected to larger microstructures. Through network tunnels, the microstructure will consist of 12 modules each of which is a separate building with a unique architecture. Each microstructure will have a width of 800 meters a height of 200 meters and a depth of 150 meter. 
Functionally, the mega buildings will include working and residential modules. There will be 278 square meters per person in the whole city. The caves will house parks and stadiums or auditoriums from them thanks to transparent walls and ceilings will be possible to contemplate the landscapes of Mars while plants for food will be ground directly above the city. The construction will require robots and artificial intelligence since the environment of Mars makes it difficult for people to explore suitable places and build tunnels themselves. By the way, for those who are ready, no matter what, to put all their property up for sale and buy a ticket to Mars, scientists are developing methods of genetic engineering to strengthen resistance to all the adverse factors of a long space flight and the Martian environment itself. For example, scientists in the laboratory have already introduced the gens of tardigrade. These are such tiny and very hardy animals that can survive in the vacuum of space. The constructed cells showed greater resistance to radiation than their normal counterparts. Tardigrade and extreme microbes, such as the radiation-resistant bacterium Dinococcus radiodurans, is a natural reservoir of amazing qualities. And today, scientists are considering the possibility of using their talents to protect future colonizers of planets. Kinetic engineers will almost certainly not be limited to only pioneer astronauts and colonists. The latest advances in synthetic biology foreshadow a future in which microbes will help colonists gain a foothold on the red planet and help us create the things we need, including materials for building a habitat. Some researchers even suggest using microbes to terraform Mars to turn it into a world much more comfortable for people. As a result, the issue of colonization of Mars is reduced to a number of engineering tasks and a big problem of financing. Do you believe that one day we'll master other planets? Write in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Do not miss new releases. Thank you for your attention.